Hello everyone, this is Mike again for you with another video and today we are looking at uh, 18 must-have items every gentleman should own from uh, Ralf Schneider. The channel is called Gentleman's Gazette and we are now going right into it. If you like that content, please make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. This would make me very happy. Yeah, after the post below video, we gained almost 2% of the non-subscribers. Now we are still at 87% of all viewers and non-subscribers. Please, let us work on this. And now let's go into the video. Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's video is about 18 must ah, items every gentleman Ralf should <laughs> This is not an EDC or everyday carry list. It's much shorter, a list of items that you should have at your office or your, your home stock. and you can use them occasionally when it's appropriate. The first item is a good quality, well-fitting suit. I feel him here. So ideally, that's a bespoke suit such as you can get on several row. And as a side note, the Japanese word for suit is sebi row, which is their pronunciation of several row. A bespoke suit. And the main difference between a British suit and Italian suit is that the construction of the shoulder. Here you can see on the picture that it's uh, very, you know, hard lined. And for example, with me today, there's no inlining the shoulder pad and it's very soft. The Italian suits are always a little bit more fancy and uh, suits from London, from several row, for example, most of the time are more yeah, they fit into the line and uh, you don't get recognized if you're walking on the streets. This is their idea. Makes for a very interesting experience at the same time. But also nice lapel here. You see this big width? This is nice. I have, I have the same today. It's quite pricey. To learn more about bespoke. Yeah, very important details always that you can, that the buttonholes are made by hand and the process, please check out the guides on our website. The second item you should own is a quality lighter. Ideally with... Ah, lighter? I don't know. I mean, I don't need it, so... I never looked into it, but I know that there are some collectors regarding Dupont and this stuff. A double flame, a traditional brand would be something like Dupont. And if you don't smoke, not even cigars, it's okay, you don't need it. But at the end of the day, it's each to his own. But you know, for for the for the candles and stuff, I show you my lighter. So this is my lighter, what I use for the candles. Ah, but it's empty. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, this is what I have. But I don't smoke and you should also not smoke. The third item you should invest in is a good umbrella. Obviously, oh. some countries specialize in umbrellas because yeah. they have very rainy weather. So I had a phase, I checked all the different stuff from Italy and um, the other brand, you will surely mention it. You can spend a lot of money, you know, the, the top part is made out of a seta and you can customize it. And also the handle, you can customize everything with these companies. There's just one small thing, it's quite expensive, yeah. You can spend thousands of euros. Such as England or Great Britain. And because of that, you'll find lots of quality makers on that island. Good brands include Brig, Brig Fox and Brothers, or James yeah. Smith, but you can also go with oh, some. Oh, what a nice store. I definitely uh, should uh, invest in some umbrellas. I don't have any high quality umbrella. From yeah. Italy, <laughs> such as Mario Tallarico or Francesco Malia. If you go with a quality umbrella maker, you can choose the size of the canopy, you can choose the, the ribs, canopy. you can choose the material, oh. and it's, it's probably sterling silver. Look at this to the right here. Yeah, silver, no, silver plated. Snake detail. Mm -hmm. Lady snake, silver plated greyhound. Horse. Ah. Especially the handle and the construction. For example, in this umbrella, I had a little seat built wow. into it, which comes in quite handy if you like to go to museums and you want to sit down and enjoy art or the picture. In terms of colors and the woods you choose, it's entirely up to you. If you're a business person and you want to go under the radar, maybe something in black, charcoal, or navy blue is exactly right for you. No, I, I, if I could wish something, I would go with a pinstripe navy. 
If you want to be a little bolder, maybe a bright blue or a red or a green is better for you. The fourth item a gentleman should have is a quality trench coat. Oh, Some purists yeah. swear by the... You know, I have one. I have the one on the right, the Burberry trench coat in black. If it's heavily raining outside, it's nice. And also the quality, how the buttons are stitched. This one is already made in Turkey, not in England, I think. So this is my Burberry trench coat. Uh, and you can feel the quality of the fabric. Yeah, I bought this, uh, I got this second hand, made in Turkey already, yeah. They have a collection made in uh, England, I don't know, but there is no difference for me. They have these hidden details, you know, you can close it full with this part, uh, I never use it, but it's also without inlining, not so heavy, but if it's raining, uh, yeah, you, you get the point, yeah. This is a nice item. I don't use it that much, I rather go with the Loro Piana <coughs> coat. Original models from Burberry, others go with Aqua Scudum. I think both are valid options. The fifth item a gentleman must have is a quality corkscrew. Some people like La Guale, yeah. which is a French brand, and they have handmade corkscrews made for no sommeliers or waiters or people who just use it a lot. They're handmade, they have different pricing options depending on the wood, and I think they start around $30 and go all the way up to $250, $300. The sixth item a gentleman should invest in is a linen handkerchief, or ideally <laughs> several linen handkerchiefs. Yeah, yeah, this, this is very important. You know, as a po for a pocket square, uh, my favorite pocket square in white is the one I got from Keaton with the red dot. So I have uh, three in pure white, one is with some edges and you can always see that the detail, if it's sewn by hand, this is a quality detail, this is a more heavy fabric and this is my favorite with the red dot. Yeah, just a small detail, this is really huge, you need to, you know, fold it accurate, otherwise it won't fit. But you definitely, if you have a suit, you know, go with the pocket square, it's also not that expensive. A good brand, in my opinion, is Simono Godard. They also produce uh, the pocket squares for Adams, and they're from Belgium, nice brand. The other two are from them. The Keaton pocket square is quite expensive, over 100 euro, no need to spend that amount. You can either wear them as a pocket square, such as these ones from Fort Belvedere, or you can use them to dry your tears, to polish a glass, or to do something else. The seventh item a gentleman must have is a good quality fountain pen yeah. with a gold nib. If you've followed the Gentleman's Gazette, you know that my journey in the classic gentleman world started with fountain pens. And to this day... <laughs> fountain pens is an interesting topic. I started to buy some and then, you know, if you have them and you have the different ink and it's just nice to have. You know, Victoria will kill me if I, the, I just, when I'm done with the video, I just leave everything like this. She will kill me. Let me show you uh, my fountain pens. So this is my case. Uh, it has got my initials. And then um, there is one small one with the diamond. This is from the Mozart collection. It writes in pink with a small nib. And then I have this one, whole made out of sterling silver. It writes with Irish green is the color. Uh, this one is a discontinued series sterling silver. And then the one with the biggest nib is this one. It's just a big piece. Uh, and this one rides in some kind of royal blue. Yeah, this is my collection. And I love to, to use them. If I sit down and uh, write a letter for someone, it's just a nice, nice thing. And remember by yourself, when was the last time someone sent you a, a handwritten letter? When it comes to confer gravity on a piece of paper, there's simply nothing like a good fountain pen yeah. because it's very Don't smooth, go with the roller ball. it gives your handwriting a very distinguished, sophisticated look that can't be replicated with a ballpoint pen or a roller ball. The eighth item you should invest in is a quality toolbox with quality tools. Uh. No matter if you own a home <laughs> or if you rent, you'll always uh. need some tools. It could be things like... Uh, you know, I don't do anything with electric and this kind of, you know, it's uh, a little bit scary for me. So, yeah, I don't need the tools. Thank you. Nine, invest in a real camera. By that, I mean something where you can adjust the ISO, the shutter mm -hmm. speed and the aperture. 
Yeah, right now I'm just uh, waiting for one last part. I can show you the new videos will be recorded with this camera. I didn't even unpack it. Uh, there's one thing still left. Uh, it's the Sony A6600. I had the predecessor of this one also. And um, yeah, now I got this. This is my camera I work with every day. So you can take exactly the picture that you want. The 10th item you should invest in is a black dress shoe, yeah. more specifically, the black cap door. Yeah, if you're talking about gentlemen, you need to have good quality shoes. And if you have, let's say, a navy basic suit, which fits 100%, then you should also invest in some nice shoes. They will stay with you if you take care of them your whole life. So yeah, good, good Oxford, idea. Oxford, that is good year welted. Why black, you might wonder. It's a very yeah. formal shoe that you can wear for business purposes, yeah. for funerals, or whenever you need a serious looking shoe. Do you want a cap to Oxford? For evening, because it's know, very simple, a good color. not too plain, and it's just a very standard shoe, and I think it's the first shoe every gentleman should invest in. The 11th thing a gentleman must have is a signature scent. Oh. As you might suspect, I always- Le Dendi from, from uh, Paris d'Orsay. This brand is not existing anymore. Herbert Stricker is, had it also in his collection, and I have this one still here, this fragrance. Signature scent. If I would recommend you something which no one has, not is too expensive and um, oh, which one would I recommend for you? Mm, yeah, this is good. So if you are a young guy, let's say 20, 25. Um, so the problem is with the signature scent, you know, you don't want to smell like everyone else and uh, it shouldn't be. I can recommend you some, some beautiful scents for 300 euro. Uh, but uh, I would recommend you this Cartusia Umo. This is a brand from Carpi. It smells fresh, is uh, ideally for the business and also for the evening. It's quite nice. The price is not too expensive and it's just, they only sell Eau de Parfum. And this one I would just, this is a small idea. And also if you wonder uh, what this is, uh, I teamed up with Hanston for my own pocket square and bracelet. You know, not every one of you will use a pocket square, but we did this um, just for you to know. Um, there is the manual for a GMT function watch and you have all the different time zones and you can use it, let's say, for a white shirt and for a red shirt, uh, for a red tie or a blue tie. So it's very easy to combine and um, this, the, the only problem is we just did 50 pieces, so this is a small production and for everyone who loves to wear these bracelets, we did also something. Uh, this is a special stone, look like a universe. If you zoom in, you know, you can see all the small dots, looks like stars uh, with my logo and this is a 150 piece limited edition. It will be released in two weeks. If you're interested, just stay tuned. Check out uh, uh, the latest news on Instagram. I uh, yeah tell you everything on Instagram. For your signature cologne, I suggest to choose something that evokes fond memories because not only does it make you happy, but it uh, also spreads your mindset the... around those of you who smell the scent and so you create an aura of positivity around you. The 12th item to invest in is a serious watch. Some people say a proper watch is the first jewel a man owns. Yeah. And while you can discuss about that, it's definitely... Uh, oh, 5070 Patek Philippe chronograph with Levania movement. What a beautiful watch. Um, yeah, the proper watch. Let's say you are at the beginning, you're 20, 20s, let's say 25, I would go for Omega Speedmaster. You can have it for the rest of your life. You will always look great with it. 42 mm, the moon watch. This one I would recommend if you have a little bit more money. This one is at 4,000 euro. Uh, next one, Submariner. You need to spend six to 8,000 euro approximately for an older model. Something that is part of a classic gentleman's wardrobe. First, yeah. consider the most use of your watch. Do you wear it in a professional setting, in a casual setting, or do you want something uh, for even well, events? Time, There's huh? some watches that you can wear wherever you go, but in general, keep in mind the dial and the strap. For example, oh, uh, this is a very special complication with minute repeater. I don't know the reference. 
if you order such such pieces like this, you need to wait years. For professional use, go with an uncluttered clear dial that is light toned and maybe a leather strap. An evening watch, on the other hand, should have a dark dial and you can go likewise with a leather strap. This one you should you buy. more of a weekend well, watch or a blue. chronograph or a nice dive big watch. watch. You should go with a steel band and something that you simply enjoy looking at. Just like with many items on this list, specifically shoes, you should always invest the most money you can into a good watch because it can be handed down to yeah. your loved ones. At the same time, you shouldn't go into... The more money you save in a watch, the more you get back when you sell it. So always go for the higher model. As a side note, if you don't need to wrist watches, consider a pocket watch, which gives you a vintage, elegant look. And at the same time, you can get comparable watches made of solid gold at a fraction of the price you'd have to pay. I mean, I have a pocket watch because I wear waistcoats and stuff, but please don't buy pocket watches, okay? You will look ridiculous. The 15th item to invest in is a pristine white For dress sure. shirt. If you have the suit and you have the shoes, you need to get a good white shirt, which you don't wear out. Yeah, this is very important with a nice collar, uh, buttons, you know, my daughter of mother of pearl. I think it's very important. The first one every gentleman invests in, because it's something that can always be worn. And while 100%. there are other shirts that are quite well too, such as light blue or off-white, especially if you like more off casual white, no. ensembles, a white dress shirt should be the cornerstone of every gentleman's yeah. wardrobe. I would go with a medium spread collar and French cuffs for cufflinks. The yeah. 16th yeah. item to invest in is a good, timeless, and classic pair of cufflinks. Oh, By that I mean something... Cufflinks, I already talked about this in a different video. Cufflinks, is if you have the white shirt, and you don't wear often a suit, you know, go for the whole road to go with cufflinks. You won't wear it very often and this will last you your whole life. Which that you nice. can wear with different outfits, no matter whether it's a business suit or a tweed sport coat. And I found that probably the most versatile one is a pair nice of cufflinks. not cufflinks. Yeah, and because of that, I designed idea. a monkey fist knot cufflink in yellow gold, rose gold, and silver, yeah, go with the and silver ones. it's an investment, but at the same time, it's something that you can hand down to your children when you're not around anymore. Yeah, Until then, makes sense. you can enjoy the pair of cuff jewelry on your shirt wrists and earn compliments for them as you go. The 17th thing every gentleman should have is a quality belt and a quality pair of suspenders. Uh, suspenders, no, I don't have any, so there's no need, but uh, quality belt, yeah, this one, uh, if you have the suit, the shoes, the pocket square, the shirt, then you go for this, yeah. The belt should have folded edges or should be neatly edge painted. Yeah. It can be hand sewn or machine sewn because that will outlast every glue. You want it to be made from a quality leather on the inside and out. And ideally, you should always match the color of your belt to your Great. shoes. Last but not least, the 18th item I think every gentleman should have is a signet ring or a pinky ring. Yeah. Now, some people may disagree with me, <laughs> but I think a little pinky ring is just a very elegant thing that a gentleman can wear. Yeah. And just like with... So, uh, I don't know anyone who's wearing a pinky ring except myself, and uh, I don't know if I would recommend it to someone else. If you feel like it, okay, but you know, uh, it's difficult to pull it off to in, 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 in nowadays. Once you have one, you will likely create a collection. It doesn't have to be <laughs> solid gold and it can be sterling silver. Yeah. You can go with stones. And if you have a family crest, by all means, put one on. If you don't have one, that's no problem. Just go with a plain stone. To learn more about signet rings and pinky rings, please check out our in-depth guide on the website here. So these were uh, <laughs> 18 items you uh, should take a look at if you are a true gentleman, uh, in his opinion. Nice video, check out the Gentleman's Gadget Gazette channel. Yeah, he has awesome content and uh, if you like that video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And maybe I see you guys tomorrow morning. Ich hab mir gerade den Zeh gestoßen. Oh Gott!